Uh, right, uh, my name is Wai Kiong, I'm a doctor in the NHS. I'm just very keen on seeing how uh, we can use technology to improve patient care. And uh, very recently, I attended a EHI 2011 live conference where I had the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Bill Aylward, who's a consultant ophthalmologist at Morefields Eye Hospital, who was um, showing us Open Eyes, which is an open source electronic patient record system which is being rolled out at Morefields Eye Hospital. So, thank you for having me today, Mr. Elwes. Uh, That's a pleasure. To, um, do you want to start by telling us a bit about yourself and then a bit about what Open Eyes is? Yes, certainly. Well, um, I before I did medicine, I did math mathematics and computers at university, so I've always had a slightly techie interest uh, in the subject. And when I became a consultant in 1994, realized immediately that the paper notes were pretty much unfit for purpose, whatever that purpose might be. Uh, but it's been a long haul getting rid of them. Um, but I think we're almost there now. And the key thing is to have an electronic record which is fit for purpose, is helpful, is quick, intuitive, and good to use. And if we can achieve that, then people will move away from paper with all the benefits that follow that. And before we talk about open eyes and that as a solution to the problems that you have mentioned, did you go out to look to see whether there are any solutions out there who could fill that role? That, that's right, uh, because there are lots of electronic record systems around, but there are very few that have had the input in clinicians in their, of clinicians in their design. And that shows, unfortunately. Um, Fundamentally, scribbling on a bit of paper is a very rapid means of data entry, even though it's impossible to get the data out. Um, so one thing that is absolutely vital for an electronic record is it's not significantly slower than writing. Otherwise, people simply won't use it. And I think that is a challenge that most commercial systems are not up to. So tell us a bit about the history of Open Eyes. Well, I've been trying to... Uh, get a good system for uh, coming on to 15 years now. Uh, we started a pilot in 1997, and that was written in FoxPro as an in-house development, and that was fairly successful. Uh, we decided we didn't have the resources to develop it ourselves, so we handed it over to a software company who developed it for us for nothing in return for sales. Mm. Unfortunately, just as they were getting going, uh, the national program was announced and they found that their sales didn't happen and that was because most IT departments who might otherwise have bought it were under the impression that they would get a free electronic record which would do all this uh, for nothing. So unfortunately their sales collapsed and they were unable to develop it to the point that we wanted. Okay. So, a couple of years ago, when we realised that um, it was time for a new start, uh, we launched the Open Eyes project. And the idea here is to uh, learn from our experiences in those previous two iterations, to produce something that is um, really good, state-of-the-art, that is a collaborative development, because there's a lot of expertise among clinicians, not just within Moorfields, but throughout the country. We want to harness that. And the idea of making it open source was crucial to the project. The reason for that is the idea works very well with clinicians because the way medicine works is open source. So, for example, if I were to develop a new operation, I would not slap a patent on it. I would go to a meeting and tell everyone about it. And then I'd write in detail in a journal in the public domain how to do it. I would then hope that somebody would see that presentation or read that journal, go away and modify the operation, and then come back the following year to the same meeting and tell us a better way of doing it. Now that is exactly the open source model of software development. So uh, clinicians immediately understand it, and as a result are very keen to collaborate. You mentioned earlier on that there's a lot of expertise out there. When you mean expertise, do you mean expertise in creating software, or do you mean expertise in contributing to the development of software? More the latter. Uh, there are a number of clinicians who can also write software. That's a very useful combination 
to have, but unfortunately there aren't enough. Um, but what we do need, though, are clinicians who have a clear idea of what they're trying to achieve in a record and a sensible idea of how that can be translated into an electronic form. And there are a lot of those, and it's a question of harnessing their time and their energies uh, towards this collaborative project. However, a lot of software companies out there would argue that that's what they do. They go out to the users and they ask them, what do you want from the software, and they design it and customize it for their, for their needs. So what is different about open eyes from that model of software development? Well, I, I think there are two problems with the traditional co commercial model. Uh, one is cost, uh, because it is a very expensive business. And the other is the speed of the development cycle. Often in a commercial software house, there will be layers of business managers and finance people and operational people in between the user and the programmer. And it may often be that the user never meets the programmer at all. Mm -hmm. And by the time the idea has been turned into a document, a specification, that's been agreed, as turn into a software plan and then a prototype, that can be a very long cycle, several months at least, by which time the interest and engagement of the clinician is in danger of being lost. So with open eyes, do you also have software developers, um, like coders that actually work on it, who are not clinicians? Yes, we do. We have a professional development team at Morfields who uh, are writing the, the, doing the really hard work of turning the ideas into code. Uh, and that's a vital part. But one crucial aspect of what we're doing is having that development cycle very tight and very short. And because it's a web application, that's easy to do on the internet. And uh, we can have a cycle as short as a couple of days mm -hmm. between a clinician coming up with an idea for an interface or some way of recording data and a mock-up being put up on the internet so they can play with it. And just to say that anyone in the world could actually go to the Open Eyes website under the development tab and actually play with this very tool. That's right. We take the open in Open Eyes very seriously indeed. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, what about funding for this project? Um, I mean, how, how does that come in? And is there a separate company set up to actually, for example, maintain the software within the hospital and also to coordinate the development? At the moment, the, the funding for the development team is coming from the trusts that are involved. The bulk of it is coming from Morfields. And that's based on a business case which simply says, if we have a good electronic record, this is the money that we will save. And that business case makes sense, even if no one else uses it. We're also getting development resources from outside, however. So Cardiff are very interested, and they'll probably be the second site to go live with Open Eyes, and they are contributing significant development resources, uh, uh, as well as NHS Fife in Scotland, who are developing, uh, who are putting resources into the development of the cataract okay. module. And we expect that other trusts will also put in their own development resources, as happens in other open source projects. Mm -hmm. It may well be in the future that there will be some commercial activity around it, and you mentioned the installation, maintenance and support. And that's certainly something that's very difficult for trusts like ours to provide to trusts outside who want to use OpenAIS rather than just develop it. Um, so we see the need for a company that will provide that service in a very similar way to Red Hat for Linux. Yes, and that's very much the open source business model. That's right. And that... that uh, that would also be a way, if that company was successful, that that income could also be used towards new developments, developing new functions. I think a very similar thing would be like a World Vista um, project, which takes the Vista electronic patient record developed by the Veterans Association and takes it and installs it in the whole of Jordan, for example. Um, I guess that would be a kind of business model that you Absolutely, yeah. that's a very good example. So what is the current roadmap for the deployment of OpenEyes? Well, we launched uh, about seven weeks ago 
with the booking module only, because that was the priority for Morfields to replace an aging system which did it. And it's a very important function uh, for the trust. Over the next few months, we expect to see the cash wrap module rolling out to Morfields and all its sites. And that will also be used by NHS 5, and probably also by Cardiff. And then we plan over the next two years to roll out functionality to cover all the various subspecialties within ophthalmology. And that includes generic aspects like um, operation notes, electronic prescribing, correspondence, decision support, uh, role-based access control. So at the end of 2013, we expect to have a record that's comprehensive enough to allow us to eliminate paper files from the system. That would be a significant milestone in the history of this organisation, I would think. It certainly would, and uh, that, that is also going to represent a major uh, point in terms of clinical safety, improved clinical safety, which uh, is very difficult to achieve with paper notes, but also greatly increase productivity and reduce cost. Just looking into the future, we talk a lot about patient-centred care, and that's very much part of the agenda of the government. Would there be a development for open eyes for patients to access? Absolutely. Um, I think the signs are that that's going to be increasingly important for both patients and for government, that patients do have access to information held about them, and their health record is no different from that. I would love to see a portal to open eyes that patients could log on to themselves in exactly the same way as we log on to our bank or to an airline or to a train company to see what we have in store. So they can check when their next appointment is, what their operation is going to be, what anaesthetic they said they would want to, to have for it, as well as their diagnosis and the clinical details that they might want to access. Now, thinking about this being an open source software, if someone was interested in developing that portal, who do not have to be in house to Morpheus or any of the related organisations, can they do that? Absolutely. Um, we're currently in the process of creating a software development kit, which will work a little bit like the development kits you get for platforms such as the iPhone. So, this will allow a novice developer in a very short period of time indeed to get up to speed and to add a module, a basic module to open eyes which actually works. Mm. Uh, and once they've got that set up, then they can make it do whatever it is that they want it to do quite easily. But a brave coder today, mm. if they wanted to just have a look at the source code and have a go at creating this kind of functionality, they can do that too? But they can do that too, yes. We're improving our documentation all the time and the code is available uh, to anybody on GitHub. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, I think, you know, that covers the main principles and the history behind Open Eyes and we follow it with interest. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. It's been great fun talking. Thank you.